Well, COP26 has finished after a final flurry of activity on the final night and into an additional day. Much has been written and will be written about whether COP26 was a success or not. Here is my review of the good and the bad from COP26. Let's take a look. Welcome to EMS Mastery, where we look at the successful strategies and tactics to master environmental management and sustainability. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Andrew Marlow. This episode looks at the overall success, or otherwise, of COP26. During the run-up to COP26, the conference was being talked up on the outcomes which were tangibly there for the taking. There was clear and compelling evidence from the sixth assessment report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change that the evidence was that human influence has warmed the atmosphere, oceans and land with widespread rapid changes in the atmosphere, oceans, cryosphere and biosphere as a consequence. And that improved knowledge base covering climate processes and other evidence demonstrated that there was an increase of global warming with a best estimate of three degrees compared with the earlier assessment reports. The sixth assessment even provided five scenarios which could lead to 1.5 to 1.8 degree rise at the lower end to up to 3.3 to 5.7 degrees rise at the upper end as their prediction. However, as late as October 2021, there were already signs of potential failure with only one country in the world, Gambia, that was on course to deliver climate action aligned to the 1.5 degrees pathway of the Paris Agreement, according to the Climate Action Tracker. Other initiatives, such as the Climate Finance Delivery Plan for $100 billion annually to support climate finance to developing countries, was not going to be met, and that it would need to be recast at $130 billion for the remainder of the period leading up to 2025 in order to catch up. If you're getting value from this episode, please click on the like button and subscribe to this YouTube channel. When the two week COP period started with the opening of negotiations, there were still opportunities for nations to demonstrate their resolve on the pressing evidence given in the IPCC 6 assessment report. So here are my good and bad points from COP26. It was great to see the United States and China promoting a climate collaboration agreement, but elsewhere countries such as India set their targets way outside the 2050 target range commitment to strengthen nationally determined contributions, NDCs, were in evidence, but 12 countries, including the Russian Federation and Australia, didn't submit anything. Enhanced support for vulnerable nations through the new mechanism, the Glasgow Loss and Damage Facility, but that has to be balanced against the global $100 billion target being missed and recast. A clear agreement to phase out the inefficient fossil fuel subsidies, but this has to be balanced against a bit of a fudge at the end of the COP with a watered down phase out of unabated coal power to a phase down. Positive engagement of the United States rejoining the Paris Agreement and other countries' participation but still too much blah, 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 as Greta Thunberg said before and even more so after the conference. 
the overall outcome of the Glasgow Pact moves the climate change issues onwards. But we will have to look towards COP27 in Egypt and COP28 in the United Arab Emirates for further answers. So, to summarise, most starkly we can see from the Climate Action Tracker the outcome of COP26 is adrift from the 1.5 degrees pathway of the Paris Agreement. The tracker has added up all the contributions from the pledges and targets from all the parties to the Paris Agreement. And there's a lot of work ahead to keep to the 1.5 degrees, with the tracker predicting 1.8 as being an optimistic scenario and 3.6 degrees as a real world scenario based on current policies and actions. As I said in my table, the overall outcome of the Glasgow Pact moves the climate change issues onwards, but we will have to look towards COP27 in Egypt or even COP28 in the United Arab Emirates for further answers. I hope to make more videos on what we each can do, whether as individuals, in our family or businesses, to reduce our climate change impact. Because often it is not governments that will make the change, but individuals. Further information on the COP26 outcome and all the documents mentioned in this episode are given in the description box below, including a link to the resources on the emsmastery.com website. If this episode has helped to advance your understanding of the outcomes of COP26, leave a comment in the box below. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel to ensure that you don't miss out on other episodes on environmental management and sustainability. Until then, thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this video, you can watch other episodes by clicking on the boxes in the top and bottom right, and to subscribe to this channel, click on the link to the left. Thank you.